Now, did I tell you the apples have a little bit of the oh, product in them? Oh, is that that one? I can say I have a picture of those apples Uh-huh. <laughs> and today we're here in Lynchburg, Tennessee. And if you know Lynchburg, then you'll know it's the home of Jack Daniels, that famous Tennessee whiskey. We've been requested many of times to come out here and check it out. I don't know much about Jack Daniels, but I do know it's very popular and it's very iconic to the state of Tennessee. We're here in Lynchburg, Tennessee, and right in the parking lot, they give you the do's and don'ts. Ah, we are here at the iconic Jack Daniels Distillery. Now, we've been to the Jim Beam one in Kentucky, and the one thing I noticed there, you could smell that that mash in the air, you know, that. But here, I don't, I don't smell, I don't smell any, any of the, yeah, any of the whiskey here. But it uh, looks like they got some tour buses over there. And I'm thinking this is the Welcome Center. So Jack Daniel's Cave Spring, and that's where he got his water. And water has a lot to do, you know, with the with the drink. And yeah, of course, there's some talk a little bit about the music history in the area and how it had an effect on on everything. Carving and whittling is a pastime here in Tennessee, and right here they talk a little bit about about that. The one thing you can say about Jack Daniels, he dressed well. He was a self-made man, and he he looked apart. Jack Daniels Old Number no. Seven is the name known around the world. Yeah, here's some of the older versions here, <laughs> right out of the jug. Of course, the bottle has changed throughout the years, and looked real fancy at one time. The Bell of Lincoln, and uh, yeah, went on a little bit, and finally found that. That distinctive bottle we all know today and that bottle is copyrighted you don't want to mess with it in fact there was a distillery that kind of resembled it and well they lost that battle very quickly but there's a lot of history in here to take uh, a lot of read about um, one thing you can say is there there's a lot of stories to be had and there's that iconic bottle of today now some of the more some of their higher end brands the bottle changes in shape a little so technically it started as moonshine except for they added an extra step and as they put them in these uh, charred barrels and gave it that unique that unique flavor and the whiskey is distributed all around the world these guys look like a crazy group of guys in fact that's jack daniels right there so we did the dry tour at $9.55 and it was $20 a person for a total of $40. We're going to see how Jack Daniels is made. Climb up down to 150 steps. If that's an issue, please let me know. There's no rest up here, so don't empty. And folks, once this tour is outside, you're going to get wet. It's raining right now. I want to throw that up when we get started. Once we get started, there's no turning back. All right? We're going to aboard the Jack Daniels Distillery Tour. So it's going to be a wet tour today. He said that once we get started, there's no turning back. So, we got our raincoats on today. We're doing good. We're doing it. Uh, and I can smell a little bit of the uh, whiskey. A little bit of the whiskey. Now we are working distillery. Say go to group. Not one drop anywhere. We are tobacco-free campus. No smoking. None of the e-cigarettes. No dipping and no chewing. And outside, you can take all pictures you want to. But once we get inside the production areas, 
And that's you turn your cameras off, put your cell phones airplane mode. The reason being is 140 proof papers come off these steels. Any kind of malfunction your camera causes a spark could potentially start a fire. And we don't burn whiskey every day. Population 361. The second small town in the state is still driving prohibition. That's sad, isn't it? There's no bars, no taverns, no saloons. There's no place in town. You go out for dinner, drink your meal. Makes a grown man a cry if you stop and think about it. There's ways around which are quite legal, and that reason is this Friday. You see, this Friday is the first Friday of the month. And every first Friday of every month, Jack Daniels gives every employee a bottle of Jack on the paycheck. We call that Good Friday here. Oh, yeah, we have perfect attendance. <laughs> Works too. Yeah. Yep. Now we drive to the top of the hill by the brickyard. We make our chalk over the chalk mowing process. We're burning the oatmeal like we do. That's the way we check it. We still do it today. We still have a hard sugar maple. That's all we burn. It's all grown locally by 80 mile race here in Lynchburg. Local farmers and growers take the sawmill. They cut it down for us. That's what Rick's is stacked up here. One quarter would make two bricks. Now when they get ready to burn, they stand under the EPA approved hoods. But we need something to accelerate the burn with. What it might use. Whiskey's correct. <laughs> no petroleum pumps for that fire because once it takes petroleum to reach down to our whiskey. The guys go down the still and they pick up five gallons of 140 proof. And they come back with four. And they're going to buy it and put a match in. And they stack them in there. We're leaning towards the middle. There's a reason for that. Because as it burns down, it's going to collapse within itself. It cuts off the oxygen, which starts the cooling process. Not as much fun watching paint dry in it. Yeah, so now you can smell that whiskey in the air. And uh, so we learned how they make the, the charcoal. There's over 90 barrel houses on the property here. Jack Daniels Fire Brigade. I think that's more of a historic, for historic purposes, not as much of actually fighting a fire. But down the road a couple of miles, we've got the most latest of the equipment available. This truck here on my right is a 1919 American of France. Hand crank starting change like a motorcycle. The one here, right in front of me, is a 1928 REO Speedwagon. Oh, it is. It's nice. Robert, it is. I got the name of our truck. REO here stands for Grants of Eli Old, Polly Oldsville. That's where our truck came from. It still runs, too. He made it whiskey five miles on the road from a farm. Jack Daniels pays $10 million a week in federal tax on all that whiskey. And the government, he said the government loves Jack Daniels because, of course, they make $10 million a week. We're heading to the cave where they get the water. And they say it's iron-free, which is good for whiskey because if there was iron in it, then it would turn black and wouldn't be uh, that good. So this is, this is where all the water is. He got the water for it. This is, a, this is amazing, actually. So he was saying that Jack was a ladies man and had seven girlfriends at one time or at least that's what uh, they believe and he was he was short in statue just like well the statue here yeah can we wear the size four shoe but that's so this is Jack's office here it's on the National Register of Historic Deeds we start the very best grains available to us number one corn malted barley and the rye beef because the whiskey and spicy notes we grind them down to a cornmeal consistency like you see in the smaller jars. We add K spring water and yeast. 
We cook it, mash cook it, we ferment it, we distill it. And that's all we do whiskey, nothing else. New extra, flavor, color. The color comes from the barrel. So if your doctor tells you to have a whole grain in your diet, <laughs> be sure to thank him until we start tonight, right? <laughs> right there, Richard Jack Daniel. He also stood five foot two, says stand up, everybody else is seated. Now make note of the gentleman singing Jackson when you right. This man right here. Remember that name, Nathan Nearest, pretty much your ear? We, we'd be son George. You see, Jack and George are childhood friends. They grew up together on a name called Farm. So when Jack established the distillery, he hired George Green. Now, he'd already hired his father, Nearest. But we don't follow Nearest Green. One does not exist, we know of. But Nearest Green was hired to be the first head distiller. We call master distillers now. So they start with Nearest Green and come clockwise across the top, then back over here and coming back down this way again, down here to Mr. Chris Fletcher. He is our present day master distiller. We saw the quality and tradition of dating and wisdom. Mr. Fletcher is his grandson of Frank Bubble down here. And back up here, this man right here, that's the young Lemon Model, Jack's nephew. Jack hired Lim when Lim was 17. Lim inherited Mr. Jack when Jack passed away. And there's so many green family working today, too. Because Jack Daniel is a hiring family, it's a form of quality control. The knowledge is where he's not lost, it's passed down. How old was Jack when he died? 61. Oh, 61. 61. See, one day Jack came to work already the first one here. All right? And he decided to send his paperwork out. But Jack did this regular basis and friends forgot his own combination. He got down in front of his safe, started to turn that down, twist the handle, trying to get open, and he couldn't. The more he tried to matter, he got to the point where he lost his temper. He hopped the kick that safe as hard as he could, breaking the big toe on his left foot. And they hopped around so we that bad football going to his doctor. He finally lived it too late. Infectious set a big toe. And medicine's back then on what they are now. The big toe's amputated. But that didn't fix the problem. So going again, they take off his foot. And that didn't fix the problem. So now they operate for a third time, they take off half his leg. And that still didn't cure it. Folks, Jack kicked his safe back in 1905. From 1905 to 1911, Jack is fighting his injury, he's fading healthy. So finally in 1911, Knocks that leg over the hip, and he dies from gangrene poison. Sam McKinley's own safe, and that is a true story. So that's the famous yeah. safe that yeah. technically killed Jack Daniels. Okay, so I gotta turn the camera off because they don't allow filming inside the still house. But I'll let you know what we've seen at the end of the video. So there's a moss that grows on everything around here and it has to do with the the whiskey. It, a moss that loves to <laughs> loves to have whiskey and it's it's harmless. It's Just rubbery. It's rubbery? Yes. Oh yeah, it's a little it's little squishy. moss. I can make a squishy bomb throw it at you. So there was four stills in there that we saw, and then they have fermenting tanks. Don said it smelt like SpaghettiOs, and you can look and see the mash, you know, bubbling up and all that. It was really cool. Um, definitely worth to take a tour to see that for yourself. And now we're gonna go into uh, the, mel the mellowing room, and yet again, there's no uh, cell phones or cameras due to flash fire. So I'll let you know after that what that was about. In the mellowing room, it's pretty much charcoal vats and they sprinkle the uh, moonshine on top of it. It takes two days to go through the charcoal. It was really cool. I can see the reason why they don't allow you to film because you could have a flash fire if there was a spark. Back in the mellowing room, you can actually smell the final product. You can smell that Jack Daniels. And uh, we've just been walking through the complex here, going into different buildings, different stages of the process of it. It's been really cool. Um, yeah, I've learned a lot. Stuff I didn't know. There's a lot to it. There's a, that stream running through the, through the facility here. What do you think so far? <laughs> Don doesn't like the smell of. This looks 
spaghettios, banana nut bread. Yeah. Yeah. So this is the bottling room. I'm not sure if they're going to allow us to film in here. And haven't heard yet. You can take pictures all you want. Here at Jack Daniels, we don't put our whiskey in barrels. We entrust it to them. You see, a good barrel is more than a container for the whiskey. It's really an ingredient. All of the whiskey's color and a good part of its flavor are drawn from the barrel. That's why we go to the extra effort to make our own. Crafted. American white oak. The rough stains are cut from the trunk and left to season in the open air. The simple seasoning of the wood prepares the oak to contribute to the character of the whiskey. Now the stains go to the barrel brazier. Yes, barrels are raised, not built. The cooper fits together by hand staves of different widths, like puzzle pieces. 33 staves to the barrel. A seasoned barrel maker raise 250 barrels a day. Now it's time for toasting, the crucial step to crafting a barrel that will impart the greatest flavor. Toasting releases much of the flavor locked inside the wood, such as our distinctive vanilla accent. Our barrel is now ready for the roar of the char tunnel's flame. As it passes through the fire, the natural sugar in the wood caramelizes. More flavor for the whiskey to draw from. Finally, a craftsman prepares the barrel for its head. The hoops are put on. The bunghole drilled. The barrel tested for leaks. And inspected under a cooper's watchful eye. And when it gets hot, the pores will open up. It's drawing the whiskey in the wood. When it gets cold, the pores close. It gets back out again. So a period of several years, constantly with the whiskey and now the wood. That's called the soap line. That is the depth in which that whiskey has penetrated that wood, drawing out from the flavor. Your barrel stored grain top floor of the warehouse is exposed to the magnetic changes. It's hotter than that throughout the summer. Therefore, that whiskey had to be deep in the wood, drawing even more color flavor. That's where a single barrel product comes from. Oh, they're putting stickers on the bottles. Oh, oh they're sealing the, um, they're putting the plastic to the top of the cap there. They're sealing the top. Oh, wow, that's, that's really cool. Now oh, they're filling the bottles. Kind of reminds me of Laverne and Shirley, you know what the, you know what I mean? Oh, that's cool. And yeah, you can see them filling it up with the whiskey over there, and it goes around this whole assembly line, and it gets packed into boxes over here to be shipped out. So it's all, it's not automated; they still do it by hand. This is cool. Because, you know, a lot of places this would be automated. It'd all be robots doing this. So that's pretty cool to see they take pride in people, you know what I mean, and packing the... Um, now, this is their higher-end brand. So maybe that's the reason why, you know, that they're hand-packing it because of that. That was really neat to see them bottling it. And you could see it being filled. And, and all the employees were all putting the stickers on there. What'd you think? It was really neat to see that. That's probably yeah. the best part of the tour so far. Yeah. Now, I do like the, the part of the tour we didn't show you, how they filter all of the moonshine through uh, the charcoal to make it Jack Daniels. Because you're not allowed to film in there. Yeah. And then they talked about the barrels, how they, they build the barrels, and then they char them. As the seasons happen, the barrels expand and attract and the whiskey actually is pushed into the wood. And you can see in the wood a little like whiskey ring. And they call that the angel share. Because you fill a barrel full of, of whiskey and then by the time you use it, it's down like so far. It was a blast. I learned a lot. It was cool to see the end part where the people are 
putting the stickers on the bottles and the conveyor belt and bottles getting filled. So that was your favorite part was the bottling. Yeah, that was interesting. I thought that was cool that they still bottle them pretty much by hand. Yeah, lots of fun. Um, it was worth the $20. Yeah, you get to experience all that. And uh, Now, they do have other tours where you can sample the Jack Daniels, which <laughs> Dawn's like, eh. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I think we'll be on the floor and you won't be able to drive nowhere. You'll be pretty much camping out overnight here. But I noticed they do give you a pretty healthy sample. So I was watching some folks sampling. That was pretty cool. So now what we're going to do is we're going to walk around. We're going to check out the home over here. Then there's a hardware store where it's like their merch shop. When he took the barrel, it stunk so bad. I got a big whiff of it. Yeah. He couldn't film that part of it. Well, and, and, and you were actually smelling the Jack Daniels. And Don's like, and he said you can actually get drunk off that. I don't know about that. So after the tour, we walked just down the road a little bit to this beautiful town square here in Lynchburg. And, oh, they got everything you could ever want, Jack Daniels. They got pizza and they have gift shops and... Velma's candy. Yeah, Velma's candy, a lot of candy places. We want to go over and check out the hardware store because that's supposed to be where you get the official merchandise and all that. And there's nothing like a Southern Square. Yeah, Lynchburg hardware and general store. All goods worth priced charged. And you can get a half a barrel here. A Jack Daniels half barrel. Oh wow, they even got a half a half a barrel. Yeah, eighty-six dollars. Okay, well let's go in and get our Jack Daniels on, right? They got patches and hats. Uh, they have your famous T-shirts that you see everybody wear. Um, Jack Daniels Tennessee whiskey, old number seven. But uh, yeah, I got the iconic black color, black and gray. You can buy a full barrel here for one hundred and eighty-three dollars, and they're nicely finished very well done and a lot of folks use them to make like tables and stuff out of them you know so they even have barrels for 125 dollars if you don't mind staining them up yourself and that's a real good deal because these things are heavy i mean and they could make really good like you can get like a like a glass top or something make it like a like a little yeah like a table or something here's a little coffee table here and i love it look at that I've seen these in cabins. It's a little bar here, not badly priced, uh, $2,200. $2, then you got the stools and all that, and it's even got the little footrest down there. But they got all kinds of really nifty things in here. Now, these are only $25, and they say welcome. And they were actually used because you can see the whiskey has soaked into the wood, so these were, were used at one time. And they got bottles and glasses for all the collectors out there and uh, that's the new Daniel's fire oh and I love these old coke machines here oh you even got little bottles of coke in them they're only a dollar ten plus tax they're not badly priced I have some goo goo clusters and don't forget the moon pie it's not all about moonshine, they're into barbecue sauce. And I've had their Jack Daniels ribs before. And uh, it's really, really good. Yeah. Oh yeah, malted milk up there. You got the steak seasonings and you can even add a little little bit of wood chips into your into your grill there, your smoker. So I got a little Jack Daniels pin for, for the map. Yeah. I wanna get a barrel. Dawn's like, you can't put one of those big barrels in the back of that's what you said. There's no room. I am going to get one one day, though. We'll make a table out of it. The Moore County Jail and Museum. That's eh, closed today. You definitely don't want to go to the Hooskow here, huh? Whenever there's a moon pie store, you know we got to check it out, right? <laughs> they got moon pie smelling candles. Ooh, yeah, they even have the that, that lemon. Everything moon pie. They got cups and of course the great big moon pie symbol they even have rugs i kind of like the banana flavored strawberries okay 
Um, but the, the classic chocolate is always the way to go. No trip is complete to Lynchburg without stopping at Mary Bobo's. Yes, this is Jack Daniels' own little little restaurant here. Now it's a family style, but they set they seat you next to people you don't know, and the hostess actually sits down with you. So your <laughs> your server technically, in a way, sits down with you and eats. It's a totally different concept that I have never ate at. So. So we're going to have fried chicken, baked ham, fried okra, Lynchburg candied apples, ham, mac and cheese, stewed red potatoes, pinto beans, slaw, cornbread, and pecan pie. Yeah, and that must be Mary Bobo there. This is the dining room here. And uh, they pass around the dishes to one another. And you'll sit next to folks that maybe you don't know. More days than not, we have fried chicken, but the truth is we don't want anyone to leave hunger so we can get refills. Now, did I tell you the apples have a little bit of the oh, product in them? Oh, I'll always set that down. I can say I have a picture of those apples. Uh-huh. Yeah, it's hot. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's my plan. <laughs> wow, looks good, huh? Yeah, you just pass it all around, and uh, it's great. been here before? You know, it's hard to eat the first meal after you've been to the dentist because your mouth feels so... It's, it's interesting. We, we, with the nine dining rooms, we can see the 109 at one time. And we, so, it, it was funny because he wanted me to help him with his correspondence. I liked it. The food was good. The, the hostess was nice. It's a nice place inside. They keep it very clean. We had students wait on us. Yes. So you get to meet folks from all over the place. We had folks from Alabama. Uh, we had folks from everywhere. And the hostess sits down with you and eats with you, which is, I've never seen that before. That was really unique. And the food was amazing. In fact, if you want real Southern food, this is the place. The okra was amazing. The mac and cheese was amazing. The fried chicken, everything was amazing. What was your favorite? Um, for the food? Yeah. I liked the fried chicken and the macaroni and cheese was good. The pecan pie was good. Pecan pie I didn't think good. I liked the sweet tea, but I really liked it. You know, that- I drank like four glasses of it. That might have, you did. <laughs> <laughs> that might have been the best sweet tea I've had. I didn't think it was that sweet though. But it was, it was perfect. Yeah, it wasn't it was over perfect. sweet and it wasn't like, you know, very good. Uh, the coleslaw was really good too. Uh, well, Mr. Daniels, we'll see you again because we had, we had that much fun. So that was Lynchburg, Tennessee. We started out by going to the distillery and taking a tour. That was really cool. I learned a lot about Jack Daniels I didn't know about. Of course, we all know that Jack Daniels is part of Tennessee. People think of Tennessee, they think of Jack Daniels. Um, and it's just one of those Tennessee things. Uh, we're not drinkers, but we no. had a good time. Yeah. There's a lot to do. You don't have to be. You'd be shocked. You know, a drinker to enjoy, you know, to learn. And uh, they have plenty of gift stores, plenty of eateries. In fact, Miss Mary Bobo's was <laughs> top notch. Of course, was really good. Highly recommend good Southern food. Two thumbs up. It was all amazing all the way through. Uh, we did a little shopping. There's a great place that sells barrels and um, and a lot of like you know stuff for your game room or your cabin. Um, you can spend a whole day here, right? Easily mm -hmm. make it a whole day. You know, take a day out of your travel plans and just spend it here. I know there's a lot of Airbnbs, a lot of bed and breakfast in the area. Dawn, what did you think? 
I enjoyed it. I was shocked because it's not my thing, but I, I really got into it. I like the factory tour, especially with the assembly line and I'm putting stickers on the bottles. That was, that, that was funny. And we tried the food. It was good. And she highly recommended these suckers. It's like a barrel and then has Jack Daniels himself on the bottom of yeah. it. So, so we were at Mary Bobo's and our, our, our hostess, um, she was telling us a story. And that was a really cool thing about that. Because she told us all these different types of stories. She told us the history uh, of of the boarding house there. Told us history of Jack Daniels. Of course, um, Mary Bobo's is part of Jack Daniels. Uh, in fact, a lot of their uh, publications and magazines, a lot of those um, advertisements for Jack Daniels, you would see like a dinner table. And that was Mary Bobo's. Pretty cool. And then she was talking about these suckers, right? Mm -hmm. And that she takes them with her on cruises. Yeah. And we had lawyers sitting at our table. Uh, we had teachers. We had a lot. Of, we got to go around and talk about what we did for a living. Of course, when they got to us, it was kind of interesting. Um, but it was really interesting. Um, and it was, it was a good time. Really good time. Folks, that's going to do it for today here in Lynchburg, Tennessee. If you guys like this vlog, give it a, give thumbs, it a thumbs up. up. Also, if you haven't, please subscribe so you don't miss these upcoming road trip adventures. And until next time. Thanks for watching. Bye, Bye everyone. everyone.